Hey, Tishon, have you seen Fred anymore? Uh, I saw him go into your dressing room a couple minutes ago. My dressing room? What's he doing in my dressing room? I don't know. Hello? Hey, Fred, it's me, Paul. Funny. I was just thinking about you. Please, please, take my wife. Take my wife. A guy walks into a bar. Pri 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 priest and a rabbi. But seriously, why are these kids today? So where are you from? With their hair and their clothes. Did you, did you, did you, did you ever notice? Thank you, good night. But, but seriously. And now it's Comics Only, the show that features comics. Only. Tonight's guests are Love Machine, Donnie Frasconi, and the letter Q. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Provenza. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. This is a good audience now that we cleared out all the dead weight. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Folks, you know, I was in the, uh, I was in the supermarket today. Oh. I was, and I went to buy uh, pan pancake uh, batter. And did you know that they changed the picture of Aunt Jemima on the box? Did you know that? No. You don't yes, know. she doesn't have that red thing, that bandana thing on her head anymore. They changed the picture. You know why they did that? Oh. Gang violence. <laughs> Actually, it's true. Walk down that aisle on a bad day, just syrup everywhere, it's horrible. Hey, we have a great show tonight. George Miller is with us, folks. George Miller. That alone is worth cheering. If that's not enough, we also have Mac and Jamie, two for the price of one. Mac and Jamie is with us. Of course, everybody, say hello to Doc. Red Wolf, everybody! Yeah. Thank you. Yo, boy. Damn it, I thought that was funny. I thought that was funny. How, how we went out, we rented a gurney. How much do you think that cost? We got a guy bit. dressed up, we pay him, we put schmutz on the hand. We got Dan Rosen to lay prostrate for a second, keep his mouth shut. That was, that took hours. Oh, boy. How much did that gag cost? I thought that was so damn funny. I'm the only person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, um, <clears throat> my next guest works with no props whatsoever. You've seen him on the David Letterman Show, you've seen him on the Tonight Show. He used to be the comic in search of a gimmick. Say hello to George Miller, everybody. <laughs> I should have tried that out in a club. Yeah. I should have actually brought <laughs> you have, John yeah, you and Dan and the whole schmear. And grabbed that it. and brought it into a club. Yeah, I was laughing over here, though. I thought it was good. I think it was funnier in this section, probably. <laughs> off, it's funnier off stage, I guess. Hey, uh, what, now, what happened? You used to be the comic searching for a gimmick. Yeah, I used to. I had a thing where I was the comic looking for a gimmick. That was my gimmick, see? That was the little spoof on gimmicks. I was looking for a gimmick, and uh, it didn't work. I never really became known as the comic who was looking for a gimmick. And so I kind of thought, this idea stinks. And I just, I, now I'm just the comic again. Well, what were some of the gimmicks that well, were suggested? Well, we did, uh, well, I was first, first I was the little known fact comic. I presented hard to believe little known facts. For instance, did you all know that 98% of all the Visine sold in this country runs down the side of your face? <laughs> some Visine? I, I, yeah, I, did not did know that. I did not know that. <laughs> and what we did, we had a, a thing on Letterman show where, um, we had people from all around the country send in, they sent in hundreds, uh, thousands, well, three actually. Of, uh, <laughs> no, there were hundreds of, of letters and postcards with ideas for me to what my gimmick could be. And then the winner, we gave a can of Hormel chili. This is true. And uh, we had, uh, yeah, yeah, we spared no and expense. People actually went and spent money on postage? Postage, they actually did, yeah. And we spent time reading this crap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, we read, the, I think, the top eight on, on the show one night. And I think uh, in the top five was I should, uh, a gimmick for me was I should say I'm a member of the Kennedy family. In fact, say I am Ted Kennedy. That was one of them. I remember. I like that. I thought that was well, then cute. you'd have to work with your pants off. You <laughs> That's that. true. Yeah. Yeah. 
It was my rendition of the cheap shot Ted Kennedy joke. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be taking that on the road next September. And also, I'm sorry. I, and also I'd have to develop the drinking problem, too, if I got yeah. out of that. So, Take a bow, uh, George. Uh, a bow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so at number one, though, we gave the, the chili to a lady from Seattle who said, uh, for my gimmick, I should commit suicide. I would be remembered after I was dead. <laughs> so she got the chili. <laughs> yeah. Not many of them. Thank that. you very much. That's, uh, uh, she's probably watching right now. Uh, you should have so, taken my advice. So we decided that the uh, <laughs> the gimmick was not such a good idea. After several years of because uh, people you, people say, well, have you found that elusive gimmick yet? And uh, I said, no, I, it just didn't work. Do out, you remember so. any of the others at all? Because I remember uh, seeing a few. God, I can't. It's been so long ago. I don't know. I, I know I got some real hate mail when all the stuff came in. Some people didn't bother with a the gimmick. They just went directly to "We can't stand you." I remember that. <laughs> Here's your gimmick. Get yeah. off the yeah. stage. I got your. I got your gimmick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one one guy said he really hated me. He says you and Mike Douglas. He he said anytime you or Mike Douglas is on, my VCR automatically will not record. <laughs> he really he did not care for me or Mike Douglas. You know that Mike Douglas has been <laughs> under my skin for years. Yeah. Talk about an innocuous thing to be upset over. <laughs> yeah, but there, there were some, there's some very odd people out there I found out through this contest. There are some very, uh, most of the letters were complimentary, but some of them were really, and the ones that were nasty all, always had no, uh, what do you call it, return, return address. address. Yeah, you couldn't get back at them if you, if you wanted to because. <laughs> well, like when you're stopping by and I tell you're working in that city, you just pull up with the car and just go, hi, I got a new gimmick. Boom. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it was it was a very nice experience, though. Now, we you had have a lot been of fun. on the David Letterman show. Many, many times. Like 50, 60 oh, times? Over 50. I don't know the exact count. 55. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, 55, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of living proof that the Letterman show doesn't really make a difference in your career. <laughs> <laughs> All these guys, they really want to get on the show. So what? What the hell with it? Actually, it does, it, it, but it's, it's slower than you think. I've been on over a 10-year period, see? So you say 55 times, it really isn't that much. You've got to really put a lot of stuff together. And you get a little bit more re recognized every time you go on, that's true. Well, but that's it's not as easy as, as some guys say. They think if they could get on Letterman or Carson one time, it's going to change their lives. Not necessarily, you know, it might. Right. If somebody now, like you saw them, yeah, I did see you could put them on this show. I put you on the most obscure <laughs> cable network you could possibly find. <laughs> now, uh, in addition to The Letterman Show, 50 some odd times, yeah. The Tonight Show, an incredible number of times. A lot of times. Not that many, but a lot of times, yeah, 40, something like that. That's a lot of, that's, that's a lot. lot of, but that's it. That's but a now, get over. But now, I'm not bringing that up to say, to say, you know, how come you're not famous. I'm right. not saying that. Right. Don't get me wrong, yeah. George. Well, I wouldn't I'm, say I'm, a thing like one that. One of my friends says I'm a minor celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My friend Buffy says, yeah, well, George, you're a minor celebrity. And I slapped her right across the face. Yeah. Well, you know, she slapped her just for being named Buffy at that point. But, George, the point is, the point is, what's amazing to me, as a professional, I look at that and I go, yeah. okay, Six or seven minutes a shot. Mm -hmm. 40, 50 shots. Yeah. Right? I should have nine Just hours of material. Just do the math. It's like an incredible yeah, amount of material. that's true. But I still only got 45 minutes. How does that work? I don't know what happens there. I don't, I don't get it either. new comedy helper. <laughs> I, I don't get it either. Uh, some people say that to me. Say, you must have hours of material. I say, no, I have maybe an hour. Well, I don't know what happens. No, you probably do. Uh, do you, what? You, you, you keep things in flux, I would imagine. Like I, most comics who write a lot, things come in and things go out. So yeah, that's true. you have a, that's a basic amount of material also, that you're working with at any given time. But when you look at all the stuff you've thrown out, it all adds up. Yeah, and also I'm not organized. I don't know what I've thrown out. And some people will say, don't you remember this joke? And I've completely forgotten it because I'm not organized at all. <laughs> David know. Brenner used to have a board or a book or something where he had everything just just so, so he would always know not to repeat material and all that. I don't, I don't do any of that. How do you write this much material? Uh, well, you just, it's just normal, uh, normal conversation. You might think of something or you might, uh, you know how to do it. Uh, or you might sit down and just try to grind out jokes about peanut butter. I never do that. I think that's good for your brain you if you really do that. that. that stand on their own in short little bursts. I mean, I like to put All things right. together in big routines. Well, and I work well, on something true. and I get, you know, yeah. five, eight minutes out of it. That's but you've true. got like you hundreds and thousands of little thoughts scattered around in your head. Well, it's just like you might watch TV or something. You might watch TV or you might uh, just, you pick it up. Uh, I think you should try to sit down and really write because I think that, that makes you uh, grind out. If you grind out things, then you think better the rest of the day. I never do that. I'm too uh, preoccupied with living my mundane life. <laughs> but, uh, but I was thinking like, the, I always do this, I call it the home shopping network. You know, they say, what can we do for you? I say, nothing, thanks, I'm just looking. <laughs> you know, I thought, 
So you get, just get those ideas. They just occur to you, I think. Uh, I don't really, uh, you know, I, it's good if you have a bunch of jokes about the family, then you put them in the group of family. You wouldn't put a family joke and then another joke and then back to the family. Do you talk about your family at all? Yeah, we're not a cl I, d I do in a kind of a disappointing way. We're not a close-knit family. At my dad's funeral, my mom and I left early to beat the rush. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. My, dad, my dad's alive. He's in the hospital right now. His uh, pound cake backed up on him, but he is alive. <laughs> See, people, people moan, and, and I love the dark sense of humor that you have. You. You, you have a real dark streak that, that appeals to me because I'm, I'm sick. I'm not well. sick guy. So, You're a sick guy, you know. I've been watching you a lot on the tube. You're out in Seattle now. I've been living in Seattle for a few months. I think on the whole coast, you're opposite Bob Costas. You ever see Bob Costas yes. show? Later, really, I don't even need to plug him, but it's a great show later. And I was bringing it up to tell you that NBC has also given me my own show. It's called Never. So, <laughs> You know that woman that wrote you that letter about the suicide thing? Yeah, I, she's now the head of NBC. I don't, know that, if you know that. I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Do you get material at all from the newspaper? Uh, yeah, I read Dear Abby all the time. Who I just never could stand Dear Abby. She always, she always thinks she's such hot stuff around the. Around, that's true. Around the holidays, one time she actually wrote this. She says, "My New Year's resolutions column has become an annual tradition. Well, move over Santa and the Christ Child." <laughs> ah, boy. It's, He's just nauseating. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you working? You got anything coming up? Uh, we can't say because this show is going to be shown sometime in February of 1996. Well, so we can't. <laughs> George Burns is booked through 1999, but I'm not. So I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the hell to say. <laughs> don't you know your own schedule for Christ's sake? <laughs> no. I, look, I think if this goes really well, we're going to put tapes in and do it oh, you know, for see. real. I'm going to shoot this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 before the tapes, it would be better to get air conditioning. It <laughs> <laughs> costs cash, George. It costs money. It's not worth putting into this show. George Miller, thanks oh, for being thank here, you. George. Yeah. Yeah.